Hey everyone, today we're going to see how to build a quick and simple dashboard using GraphQL. So we have a GraphQL integration and I've just built a dashboard out of it as you can see. And you can see some interactive charts here, a table grid with some information and much more. So actually in my case, my data is split across two different tables. So let me show you what I mean. I actually have a missions table over here where I can find information about my missions. And I also have a payloads table where we can find information of different payloads being used across missions. So I actually want to combine this data and view it together. So if we head back to our dashboard, whenever I click on a mission, I want to see its associated payloads in the table next to it, as you can see right here. So in the conventional approach using REST APIs, this would be a complicated process as you'd have to create multiple endpoints to access each of the data and it's just cumbersome. But now since we have a GraphQL endpoint, you can access everything using a single API call, which is both simple and much easier to understand. So using Drona HQ's integration, you can use GraphQL endpoints to fetch data you want and create some comprehensive admin panels, GUIs, dashboards, and much more quite easily. So let's see how to do just that. And well, stay tuned, have fun, and I'll catch you guys in the video. So let's get started. I have a blank screen open with me. And the first thing we're going to do is bind our GraphQL data to Drona HQ using connectors. So to do that, head back to the Drona HQ admin console and go to the connector section. On the top right, you'll see an add connector button. You need to click on that and scroll down to find GraphQL. Awesome. Now you just set up a connector name. You can write whatever you want. My GraphQL custom connector and add a GraphQL endpoint. So for this example, I'm going to use the API provided by Tesla for the default SpaceX data. It's a pretty cool API and it even gives you this interface to play around with. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it there. If you have a custom data hosting and you're using the GraphQL connection, you can set up authentication systems. For example, if you have a simple username and password system, you can use basic authentication. If you have an OAuth authentication, you can use that. So plenty of options available and a lot to explore. So I'll just use none because our current scheme doesn't have any uh, authentication. So uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Once you test your connection and save it, you will get it popped up in the screen. I already have one setup where I've named it Tesla Data GraphQL, which I'm going to play around with. So once you have that, you need to click the add API option over here and you'll get this tray, which asks other information. So give a name for your query and you need to write your query here. And once you do that, you are all set to do. So uh, go back to your explorer and create whatever query you want. So I can explore here, for example, if I want to retrieve missions information, I can click on missions and it shows me that uh, I'm going to retrieve all these data using my queries. So I've ticked mark description, ID and what are the fields I want to retrieve. Uh, you can do the same and it's a real simple process and you just need to structure it in this way using schema definition language, which GraphQL uses, which is actually quite similar to JSON. So uh, write whatever fields you want and structure it like this and you can copy paste it there. So the power of GraphQL is, for example, you can see I'm retrieving these payload field, which is actually a separate field. If you scroll down here, you'll notice that payloads by itself is a separate object, but I'm able to query it and access it using a single query. And that's the power of GraphQL rather than using REST APIs and creating multiple different URLs to access each of your data. Uh, GraphQL solves the problem by giving you exactly what you want from a single call and you don't need to underfetch or overfetch it. And now since Drona HQ supports GraphQL, you can query your data much more easily and make it much more accessible for everyone. So uh, build your query using this or whatever custom query builder you have. And you just need to write this and copy paste it over there. So I already have some queries set up, which I'm just going to show you. So I have first a get missions query, which I'm using to retrieve a list of missions. You can see it's structured simply just retrieving the missions with some basic information about missions like ID, description, website and whatnot. So if I test this, it's going to work. You can see that response code is successful and here it's showing the response I have. So let's take a look at another query I've built to get each missions detail. 
this key, this query uses a variable. So it's dynamic in format. I need to pass an ID I want to get that particular machine details. And to create a variable, I just have to enclose my variable name in double braces. And that will automatically show me a variable pop up over here where I can give a test value to see if it works. And also this will open up a dynamic field inside my application, which we can configure and play around with, which I'll show you guys in a minute. So that's my get mission details query. And let's take a look at my last query for the graph I'm going to build, which is get launches. So again, this is a simple static query where I'm getting how many launches were made in each year. So you can see these are all my launches. One was made in 2014, another in 2014 and so on. And we're going to use this query to build a nice bar graph, which is going to make allow us to visualize all that data. So once you have these queries ready and saved, let's go back to our app and start building. So I have a blank screen again with me, with just some basic layouts and headings filled. Let's quickly start dragging and dropping the controls we want. So for the first half of the screen, we wanted a chart. So I'm going to search for charts, control and pop it here. I'll give it a good label launches by year. Make it bold and center it. So also unhide the label so that it's visible. Awesome. I am going to drop in a table grid control too because this is required to display our missions list. Let me name it list of missions. List of missions again i'll set it to bold and center it and unhide the label awesome so we're almost done with our ui we just need a couple of fields to display the individual mission details so with that i'm just going to use simple text boxes you can customize it and use whatever fields you want so i'll drop in four text boxes for my id name and website urls I also want to display my description, which is a bit longer. So I'll be using the text area control, not the text input control, which will make it look better. And last is the separate object I'm displaying the payloads for a particular mission. So that I'll use another table grid to display it, which will make it a lot more powerful. So now I just have to set up the labels for each of these controls. Let me do that real quickly. Awesome. We are done with setting up our controls. I just forgot to unhide this label, but yeah, now we are pretty much done with setting up our UI and you can see our UI is already complete. So if you've watched the other videos, the next part is the same formula repeated again. You just have to use the APIs you've built in the earlier step and connect it to each of these controls. So let me show you how to do that quickly. And uh, let's start with our table grid first. I'll go to the bind data section, connectors, Select a connector and I'm going to choose the connector we have Tesla data GraphQL. So I'll use the get mission query for this control and just give it a name retrieve missions list and I can save it. Awesome. We're good to go. Select the keys you want to display. So I want to display my ID, my mission name and manufacturers and Wikipedia website and website. So you can choose whatever keys you want to display and save it. By default, it's going to give you the, these names as the headers, data.missions.id, data.missions.name. If you want to change that, you can easily do so by going to the custom formula section, clicking on the edit button, and you can edit the labels over here to whatever you want it. Once you're happy with these labels, click on save and validate and the labels will get updated. Awesome. So uh, now all that's left to do is connect these individual fields to our data. So for most of the fields, it's from the table grid. So I can simply go to the control section and set it up like this. So I want from the dashboard screen, I want from my list of mission controls and I want to choose my field name, which is missions.id. But for the other controls, uh, so such as description and payload, it's not present in the table grid. So for that, I need to create a connector. Let me quickly show you how to do that. It's the same process. Go to the GraphQL. I want the get mission details connector this time. So I'll choose that and give it a good name. So maybe get description. 
and the id is the dynamic variable which we created in our api so for this i'll pass whatever is there in our id control and that is pretty much it and of course i have to choose the description so that it gets displayed in the description box so that's how you do it for description same process you need to repeat for payloads and we'll be good to go so uh, connectors select connector and uh, choose graphql get mission details get payload data and id is our id control test and finish and i want to display the payloads id nationality orbit and manufacturers you can display and custom data whatever you want once you're ready with it just click save and we're good to go so we're almost done all that's left to do is configure the connector for our graph now which is again the same process go to mine data and if you go here you can choose what data you want to fetch so i have chose uh, this is for the payload sorry so let me click the graph again and yes i'll get the option screen and here you can get the connector screen which is again the same thing get whatever data you want so here i have get launch data and i've chosen to get the launch here and if you go to the settings you can just quickly set it up choose the bar chart choose the x-axis and y-axis column so i want x-axis column as launcher y-axis column as launcher too and uh, i want to aggregate it by count and uh, yeah give it a x-axis name y-axis name you can set where you want to display the legends and uh, well that is pretty much it if you want a detailed video on how to use plotly charts or plotly controls to create some amazing charts do visit the link in the description but we're pretty much done with our application for now and let's preview it to see if it looks good uh, so yep it's loading give it a minute so you can see our graph is loaded successfully and it's looking nice in my list of missions it selected my first mission by default and i'm able to see that mission details below if I select some other mission, the details get updated and I can view the details for that particular mission here. So, well, everything looks good and I'm happy with my application. So, yeah, that is about it. I have an interactive graph. All my controls work fine. So, I hope you learned something out of this video and found GraphQL integration useful. Have a nice day and do check out our IHQ today.